Specific. I am in the country of Oman, which is right next to where I live right now, the UAE. And the UAE and Oman are both inside of Arabia. And more specifically, they are on the Arabian Peninsula. The Oman is just so gorgeous. It is full of all sorts of different terrain. There's mountains, there's beautiful ocean, there's uh, quite a bit of greenery once you make it farther into the country. And we will be making our way over to the Persian Gulf once we make it into the UAE. Now time is, I am on the beach. And now time is very fun because the beach is full of all sorts of different things, uh, including fish, which I caught a fish this morning with my bare hands. And he was a real cool looking dude. It washed up on the shore. There are tons of shells everywhere. As you can see all behind me, there's lots of different shells. There's like these cool snaily dude shells. Here's another one, but they've got real vibrant little patterns on them. And another thing I found here on the beach is these little guys. Now, you may have seen these because they're at a number of beaches, but these belong to cuttlefish. Now, more specifically, these are cuttlefish bones. They go inside of a cuttlefish to hold him together. Now, uh, if you don't know what cuttlefish are, they're a very cool looking crustacean thingy. They uh, kind of look like a squid like squid slash octopus type thing. It's got little tentacles and it swims around. Now I'm gonna give you guys a closer look. So if we look down here, you can see there's the little spike on the end, but it's crazy how big this is. I've never seen the cuttlefish spines get this big and it's crazy to think. So there's about an inch thick flesh all the way around. Like that's a really big cuttlefish. Now some people I've known actually collect these cuttlefish bones and put them in bird cages because these are made of calcium buildup and birds can sharpen their beaks or dull their beaks or whatever they do when they peck on these things. So it's real cool. You can collect them for your birds if you wash them off. But they're free and they're pretty cool looking. It's all natural. Um, and now into the water. There are all sorts of little creatures and whatnot in the water as well. Uh, one thing that I've got to watch out for though is stingrays. Now you may have seen I have some booties on and these will be my stingray protectors to protect me from stingrays. And they're actually just diving boots but it's better than nothing because stingrays hurt. Um, they got all sorts of fish though. It's incredible the amount of fish that they have here. Uh, two fish that really stood out to me that are in the area is thresher shark and scarlet frogfish um yes they're a very odd little combo but they're really cool if you've ever seen either of them um the scarlet frogfish is actually related to the sargassum fish which i have caught in south padre some other animals that i'd really like to encounter which we most likely will is camels because they are everywhere but we've got tons of stuff to explore so you guys let's get moving Hey you guys, so I was out in the water tonight and I was scooping around a plastic bag trying to catch stuff. I've caught like one or two teeny tiny minnows, almost caught a crab. But then I saw this guy floating around so I got him. He's not very active but he is in fact a jellyfish. He's not like one I've ever seen. Uh, I'm not sure if he's venomous or not but I would recommend not touching him. So another cool little thing that I've seen on this beach is crab holes. Now in South Padre when I go camping there these 
uh, the ghost crabs that we have there will dig out and you'll see all these little balls of sand all around because they throw their sand. These guys like to make little pyramids as you can see here. All the balls are about two feet away but the, right now they're out running around down by the water because if they are like ghost crabs they have gills so what they do is they go down and get salt water and put it inside of their shell and then during the day they breathe that salt water and then do it again every single night. This is the most determined crab I have ever come up against. My goodness. These crabs are way more determined than any of the ghost crabs I've ever encountered. Because when ghost crabs dig, they go down and up in a J, only about two or so feet down. This guy's probably got to hit the core of the earth pretty soon. But uh, I'll keep digging, and if I'm lucky, I might even find some diamonds. Oman right now and I'm more in the city area but one of the weird things about being in Oman is everywhere you go there are goats I can see there's all different colors of goats and it's real cool because if you look close on a goat I'll see if I can get a new one they've got rectangular pupils and oh, they're all gone I guess they don't like me very much <laughs> Okay, you guys, so I wasn't able to manage to catch one of these guys. Finally, it's the next day uh, from when I tried to dig them out. But these guys are, in fact, ghost crabs, just like we have in uh, South Padre. This one looks to be a boy, uh, hence the shape on the chest. You can't really see because he's pretty sandy. But it's got some big claws. These are like as large as they get as far as I've seen in South Padre. Set him down, see what he does. Oh, there he is. Hello. Hello. Ooh, he's angry. See, there's his fighting position, his claws up, making sure he can get away. Do -do -do, do -do -do. Goodbye, Mr. Ghost Crab. So, our Ghost Crab hunting was a success. You can see him. There he goes, running to the water, running to find a safe spot. But they're all over the place. But, you know, gotta keep moving. View. my goodness you guys so this is like a natural jetty that we are standing on and it goes out so far into the ocean it's real cool but my goodness look at the beautiful blue water and the big peaks behind us and it's just really cool now what's even cooler is that I am in a fishing village I know I'm right at home um, I am in the city town thing of Muscat which is the capital of Oman and um, yeah, found the ocean. It's a beautiful beach here. It's much different from the area that I was originally at. But you can see just this beautiful blue water and I'll take you to the peak right here. I'm just going to be careful. Show you guys over. But really cool little area. There's all sorts of mountainous terrain around Oman and this one just happens to be on the ocean. Real cool. You can see all around here there's some big shipping containers out there like the big ships you know and the little fishing boats were going out but there are none in the frame at the moment but as always you guys we got to keep moving because there's tons more to explore
So here we have a cool little creature and this thing is called an ant lion. And what the ant lion is, is like a nymph form of the adult ant lion. So it will later grow wings and fly out of its little hole. But what it does is dig like a reverse pyramid uh, in like a concave cone type shape into the ground in the sandy area so when ants walk by they'll slip in and it's pretty cool to watch because the ants aren't able to get out because of the way they built it and then the ant lion will then flick sand into the ant's face and then the ant once it gets tired will fall into the center of the cone thus the ant lion will come out with his giant pinters as you can see here and grab them and then eat them and that's what they live off until they're able to get big and then fly out but real cool though guys you can see he tries to dig into the sand in my hand to hide because he is currently afraid so I'm gonna put him back down but real cool little guys and be sure to keep an eye out for these little dudes when you're out and about so I've been hiking a little more and my goodness you guys you can see how different the terrain changes like from place to place it's just a matter of minutes and you're in a rocky area a matter of minutes you're in desert a matter of minutes you're in green it's really cool but um, just to help you guys get a little bit more um, lay of the land I'm gonna uh, check out the map so let's get drawn so I am going to do a rough sketch of the Arabian Peninsula because that is what we are currently on and it consists seven different countries that I am going to show you. So it kind of looks like a boot shape. Now I'm going to draw it facing towards me. So here's, oops, so here's a little boot shape and it's got a little rhino horn looking thing and a little rhino ear and then it goes back up. But here is north, so north is up, south and so on. But Right over here in the heel area, this is Yemen right here. Then if you move a little bit more over here, this little area is Oman, and that's where we are. We, a muscat's about right here, so we've been hiking up here over to the United Arab Emirates. So this is the UAE, and it's got that little horn right there, and that's where Dubai is over here, Abu Dhabi and so on. And then this entire huge, gigantic area right here, this is all Saudi Arabia. So this is huge, vast desert and uh, whatever other things are in Saudi Arabia. And then right here we have Qatar. And then you move a little bit up and right here, this little island area, that is Bahrain. And then last but not least is Kuwait up in the corner. And you guys, that's what it basically consists of. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's all the countries. So hope you guys enjoyed my little sketch and maybe I can become a map drawer now. But let's keep moving so I can show you guys the real life view of the UAE sometime soon. <laughs> Here's 
another one you guys this one is called a silver grunt and the reason they are called grunts is because they do in fact grunt uh, now he does dates right but yeah uh, catching tons of fish out here they're all over the place and they're actually a lot of them are pretty good size so having lots of fun you guys wish you were here but wait you are I am at the fish market in Abu Dhabi and we have finished fishing and now we are getting the fish all clean and cut up so that they can be cooked and eaten. My greetings to you everybody once again. I am out here by the ocean. I am about three hours south of where I was fishing in Abu Dhabi and I'm still on the Arabian Gulf as you can see. It's beautiful as ever. It is a slightly windy day today and I am standing here in front of a very awesome and important island. This everybody is Sirbani Yas Island. Now Sirbani Yas Island has been a big part in the growing populations of animals that have been endangered and some that have even been called extinct at one point but one of those being the Arabian oryx which was considered extinct in the wild is now flourishing on this island because it was a secluded area where they were able to live in peace without having to worry about poachers or having to worry about uh, predators but this uh, island has been very successful and the only way to get to it is by speedboats you guys <laughs> to Surabani Yas Island and let me tell you my experience so far has been wild now it was real fun um, coming in here on the speedboat that wasn't so speedy but that was even better because I got more of a view I was able to look down into the water and there's like needlefish swimming around and we saw some little tilapia looking dudes and it's a really uh, full of life little area now we have already taken a little game drive <laughs> It was really cool to see how they take care of the animals and how they sustain them in each different way. So for all the animals except for the cheetahs, they will feed them. So there were like bins around of hay that the oryxes were eating out of and the little gazelles. But the cheetahs are self-sustaining. So that was one of the coolest animals that we had seen on there was the cheetahs. And we saw four different cheetahs, but two of them really stood out. It was two cheetahs that were pets at one time and then were taken away from the owner or given in. We weren't told exactly what. But, but they were two brothers and they uh, were sticking together. They said that they're always by each other's side, which is uh, weird for cheetahs because 
they're pretty solitary animals. And then there was the orcs. Now the orcs were all over the place, which is awesome because they were declared extinct and they are now uh, brought back into the endangered category and their population is growing. But those guys were all over the place, so it was cool to see them. Um, got real big, long, sharp horns and cool different patterns and colors, and they were going around eating. And then we saw these big uh, sheep-looking dudes, and what well, they were called sheep, and they are great climbers, we were told. They've got these huge horns and these big beards that hang down, and their way of escaping the cheetahs or whatever predator is chasing them is to climb and at full speed when they're running and if they were to jump they can reach about six feet in the air which is taller than me. And then we also saw some Egyptian geese. Now you guys might be thinking well why are there Egyptian geese in there? They aren't that endangered at all. Um, it is because the Egyptian geese were not brought in but they flew in themselves. They migrated and what happened was they flew in or fly in and they're like oh this place is pretty nice I think I'll just stay here so that's what they did and then there were two types of gazelle that we had seen there was the mountain gazelle and the sand gazelle now the sand gazelle was a bit lighter obviously because the sand gazelle needs to blend into its surroundings another one that I had seen was a giraffe so those guys are in there and they uh, walk all over the place the trees are provided to them they are shorter so they don't grow as tall because they do not need to be as tall and the cool part about Serbanias Island is the way they're taken care of. It's like they have their own little area because it's like a game park in South Africa. They're just huge. It's never ending. This island is way bigger than I had ever expected. And it's really cool because it's like they're in the wild again. They've got their own little area. They can roam for miles and miles. And it's a really interesting little setup. Let's keep on moving. Okay, you guys, so I am down on the water and I'm still in the Arabian Gulf on Sarbani Yas Island. And I've decided to do my own little snorkeling tour. And I will snorkel and swim around, uh, sometimes with snorkel, sometimes without. Just depends on how I'm feeling. And uh, I'm gonna see what creatures I can find. Now, some of the creatures that I already know that are in this area include the black dip shark, which are a safe shark because they're real little and they aren't very aggressive. Then you got stingrays, which I have to watch out for, some jellyfish, uh, all sorts of little reef fish. Then you got crabs and um, all sorts of cool little things. But yeah, the water here is real shallow, real clear. And it's not like in the Keys where it was uh, hot, almost like bath water. This stuff is a bit uh, chilly. It was a bit warmer earlier in the day when the sun was out, but uh, I'll just have to make do with what I got right now. So let's see what we can find. So, 
I am sitting here outside of a little lagoon type thing and uh, yes this is all salt water as you can see it has a bluish tint to it and it is very pretty and it is full of mangroves and little sharks and all sorts of different creatures that live in here. So the cool thing about mangroves is that they grow in the water like when I was in Australia they were growing along the beach but the mangroves uh, host a number of different species including like little crabs and little fish to provide protection because if there's a big fish coming for you, you can't really uh, get through all the roots because the roots tangle all around but uh, yeah real cool little ecosystem here and the I guess the point of Serbanias Island is what these guys are trying to do is make it self-sustainable so they make it like the natural environment and uh, pretty soon it's able to take care of itself where they don't have to bring in food they just have it grow or they don't have to provide shelter like um, artificial reefs they can just uh, have their own little reefs made throughout time so when you guys think of the UAE like especially Dubai you know that they like to make islands like the Palm Islands for example you know Jameer Palm Islands and then you've got the world that they made with all the little continents and countries and everything but did they make this island? Well actually this island is all natural it was formed by itself and this island is actually made of majority salt so there's lots of salt around this island and tons of minerals as well there's copper in the rocks as you can see there's like a statue of liberty type color like we saw in Oman you might wonder well how do they get fresh water because there is no fresh water provided on this island they actually have to make their fresh water so they have huge desalinization plants desalinization sorry I stuttered but if you guys don't know what that is it's just removing salt from salt water so that's basically what it is they evaporate the water leaving the salt on the ground and fresh water rises and they purify it and so on but if you guys want to test it for yourselves you can do something like that or you can even just put salt water on a black piece of paper once it evaporates you can clearly see that there are little salt crystals there but that's basically what they do and then they uh, pump it all around they pump it to the hotels for people to drink to bathe in and then another cool thing is they have multiple millions of trees throughout Serbanias Island and all those trees have their own little irrigation system so they've got pipelines going everywhere to keep these trees sustained and it's really an amazing thing and it sure took a lot of work to make it but it's working out pretty well so uh, the animals are pretty happy about it but yeah you guys it's um, pretty early in the morning and it sure is heating up as we are in the desert so I've got to keep moving <laughs> What's up you guys? So I am standing here and I've got this falcon sitting on my hand. But these are very very beautiful birds and they are awesome. They are birds of prey so they um, do eat other birds as a source of food. But these guys are highly respected in the UAE so much that uh, when they fly on airplanes they get first class. And um, he's even got his own passport as you can see right there on his wrist so he is able to travel. <laughs> Okay you guys, so welcome to the Arabian Desert. Now as you can see, it is a very big desert and it is more of a red type sand as opposed to the color of sand in Oman. Desert is a gem as far as creatures and all sorts of animals. The trick is just being able to find them. Now a lot of the animals out here in the desert have adapted in order to use camouflage or hide on the sand and stay cool. So we'll see what we can find and Hopefully I can introduce you guys to some of the coolest things in the UAE natural world. Okay you guys, so 
So as you may have noticed, I have a change of wardrobe and what I am wearing is the traditional Emirati uh, Kendura and I got a khutra on my head and uh, I'll go into a little more detail as soon as this bee stops swarming around my head. So the, this is a Kendura and the, the one that the Emiratis will typically wear is white and uh, if you're from different areas in uh, the world then you can get different colors like um, Oman I've seen brown and gray and other colors but it does have pockets here so I can store all my dirhams and then I've got a khutra on my head now the khutra is uh, a like big square cloth now you fold it in a bunch of different ways and you can tie in multiple different ways um, there's tons of different styles in which you can wear it um, this is a common one for when you're out adventuring and which I am and you can also get it in different patterns you can get it in plain white or you can get it in red checkered you can get it in red striped all sorts of cool different things and sometimes under the khutra the people uh, of this area will wear prayer caps so it, you can see the little tiny white prayer cap and then there's also one more thing that you can wear and it is called an agal now it is a black ring it's like a spring type shape and what it does is it just pops on top and you can fold it over in certain different ways and that's for more of a formal thing like if you're in town rather than out adventuring with goats and camels but a very cool uh, way of uh, getting dressed in the morning just throw on the same thing every day so you don't have to worry much about your outfit and under I do have white clothes as you can see I've got these giant parachute pants as well as I've got a white t-shirt because this is a fairly see-through cloth so you can see what's on there so it's always good to have an undercover pair of clothes now the reason for this outfit not only is it cool but this is also a very helpful thing for being out in the desert because it is white it reflects light so you do not absorb as if you were wearing a darker color so you don't absorb so much heat and it's also a more aired out type of clothing so you are able to stay fairly cool and this will protect your head from getting too much sun so you guys uh, very cool but it is getting dark out so I am going to keep moving so let's go Okay, you guys, so uh, whenever you go camping out here for, well, at least for my family, uh, we tend to get into groups with other people who also like to go camping. So it's very cool to find people who have common interests with you. So um, a lot of people get big groups of people and go out camping and you will meet lots of different people from all over the place out of all sorts of experiences. So I've got three camping buddies with me right here. So let's meet them. We've got Eve, we have Callum, and we have Domino. Now these guys have all uh, travel tons and they love being outside as I have seen from being with them for the past few hours I just met them and my goodness you guys they love exploring and they really know how to have a good time in the outdoors So where are each of you originally from? Um, well, I was born in here in UAE, but I'm from America. My mom's from California and my dad's from Ohio I'm from Ireland and I was raised in Meath. My mom's from Galway and my dad's from Meath Okay, very awesome. And, and I'm the same as him. Okay, so they are both from Ireland. You guys all travel quite a bit, as you can tell just from here and where you guys are from, and we have all somehow ended up in the UAE. So, uh, what is some of the coolest things that you have found while out traveling? Well, when I was in Thailand, I rode an elephant. Very cool. Um, I've been to lots of countries. I've been to Barcelona, you know, all over the place. Yeah. Like, let's think, Sri Lanka. I've been to America, of course. Yeah. Uh, I've been to, um, well, I was in my mom's belly when I was in Africa. Very cool. So, yeah. Nice. Okay, and what about you guys? What are some of the coolest things you guys have found out or found while out traveling and exploring? Last time I went camping, I saw a gazelle over the sand dunes. And um, I hold a few falcons. And I went to not as many countries as Domino, but a few. Yeah, very cool. And what cool things have you found, Eve? Mm, I forget. You forget? Well, that's okay. Now, what um, other outdoor activities do you guys enjoy other than camping? Well, I like sports, like tennis. I like running. Um, rugby's fun, like if you just pass it. Yeah. And stuff like that. And what about you guys? What do you guys like to do um, outside? I like to play sports, like down like um, football or what Americans call it soccer. 
and then rugby, tennis, and a little hurling, and a few others. Very cool. And what do you like to do outside? When you play outside, what do you do? Play frisbee. Play frisbee. Very cool. Nice. And last but not least, what is your guys' favorite animals? Because um, being able to travel and see all sorts of different animals, you really can connect with some more than others rather than just seeing um, documentaries about them on TV. Um, so what have you found to be your favorite animal? Well, I like elephants because they're big and they're really friendly. Um, yeah, pretty much I like elephants, horses, they're really pretty and they go really fast. Yeah. And what are your favorite animals? Her first. Okay, what's your favorite animal, Eve? Raccoons. Raccoons, squirrels. squirrels. And cats. Very cool, you like lots of bushy-tailed animals. And what about you? Um, I like uh, sun bears, uh, sloths, and tigers. And uh, basically mammals. Okay, all very cool animals. Now you guys, uh, when you're out all by yourself and you're trying to find lots of cool creatures, it's very difficult to find them in a short amount of time. So these guys are going to help me find all sorts of desert creatures because they have had lots of experience finding bugs and animals outside. So you guys, let's see what we can find. As you can see, we found camel poop. You'd think because of an elephant they have such big poop. Camels, they're herbivore and their poo is really small and it's not actually that dirty because of what they eat. Now let's try to open one. I'll let's do the see. Same thing. So these are the some of the more adventurous uh, desert explorers you guys as you can see. And I'm this is what still trying, trying to look find. Like. Looks like a little bowl that you can eat. Here, you so you can see that camel poop, poop consists of mainly grasses and hay and it is very dry for oh, the camel can conserve water just by um, taking all the water out of the poop and just dropping little tiny balls of very dry poop and it's so dry that it can actually be used as a fire starter because it's just condensed grass as you can see and it's all over the place and um, as these guys were saying you'd think with the camel being such a big animal that it would drop big poops but no they're quite tiny actually <laughs> Yeah, look, you can see the tracks as he moves. Wow. It looks see-through. It looks see-through. I mean, look at that. It's moving. It's alive. It, it's color yellow. Its face is brown. But look at that. It looks like kind of a smaller version of dung beetle. Oh. oh is he okay? Yep. He, he's moving? Thank Let's you. let him free. Okay. Yeah. See you, oh. little guy. Bye. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so I am out uh, in about in the desert tonight with all of my camping buddies, as well as Rick, who works for the Environmental Conservation Agency in Abu Dhabi, and he is taking us out herping. So hopefully we'll be able to find some reptiles that, like we did in Oklahoma, uh, as far as snakes and geckos and whatnot, and he will assure that they are safe, as well as help us to track them down. So yeah, let's see what we can find. Hopefully we can discover some cool creatures. See the tracks, and he goes. Oh, I thought you had yeah. it. These Can tracks are. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it picks up over here. He's somewhere over here. Let's see where he's going. We found a gecko. He almost seems see-through. They're really hard to spot because of their skin color. They're really fast. And. So if you look at their front leg, you see the webbing on their feet there. You see it. Uh, yeah. There's no separate you webbing. Check if it's they, a boy or a girl. They, oh, well, one second. They use that for when they dig into the sand very quickly. Yeah. So these guys will definitely just, you know, with the front, in the front end, they use it to, as a um, as a webbing, and they separate the sand very quickly, and they go right in the sand, and they disappear in the sand. It's very, you gotta be very sensitive when you hold them, because they're very, very, very hard to hold. And you don't don't ever want to touch their tail because if you touch their tail, the tail will fall off. The, I mean, it'll grow back, but you know, you don't want to touch tail. So what you do, you flip the animal over. And then you look at the, um, if you give me some light on the, on the gecko. You've got a lot of light. Okay, so, see. so this one no. is actually a male. Oh. Again, you can see you could, you could see his uh, head a little better. I used to move the sand. Oh. Sorry. He's, oh, he's, he's very angry with me right now, so we're going we to let him go very quickly, okay? Can I touch? <laughs> Oh, it's a boy. Shh. Oh, that's humongous. Can I hold him? Yeah, you can. 
One second. Hold he has on. no offense. Can I, I want to hold a flat hand, so just let the camera see. But I actually had a very pleasant night's sleep other than the fact that I only slept about three or so hours. Got to cover two countries in one episode. So that was a really cool little thing that we did. But yeah, I've got my ticket out of here right over there. So you guys, until next time, stay wild. Because their parents told them not to. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>